Y'all get ready. Yes, you get ready. This news in the streets. Join us and tune in for the tea. Breaking news with integrity. So sell your friends and your family. It's the lovely TV show. Bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the lovely TV show. Be sure to share, like, and subscribe. Hey, tea sippers. I hope you guys are doing good today. So, this DJ Envy situation is getting crazier and crazier. So if you guys do not know, back on August 3rd, DJ Envy basically filed a lawsuit. He said he wanted all of the real estate fraud lawsuits against him dismissed because he himself had lost 500K. And I don't know if that lawsuit has been dismissed as of yet, but him saying that he lost money, I don't think that's going to resolve him of any possible responsibilities in this situation. And now more and more people are talking about it. If you guys don't know, about a week and a half ago, him and Tyrese got into it. He said that Tyrese disrespected his wife. They went back and forth. And then Tyrese came out and was spilling a bit more tea on DJ Envy in his situation concerning this whole, you know, flipping of real estate this whole alleged scam situation. So I want y'all to hear what Tyrese had to say. Y'all go ahead and check this out. You don't want nobody to attack your wife and your family. That's your bottom line. Let me tell you what my bottom line is. Until I take my last breath, maybe it's the Capricorn in me. I'll never let a violate my character, put words in my mouth, or paint a picture, manipulating, gaslighting, and putting me in this light for something that I never did. And if y'all gonna say I did something, just understand that I've been dealing with the courts. Divorce number two, baby mama number two. They don't deal in emotions. They don't deal in feelings. They don't deal in the courts. They don't deal with hearsay. What they deal with is receipts. Proof and evidence to back it up. Otherwise, the real reason that you had your wife to call into that station with that monologue that both of y'all rehearsed is because Social media was beating the shit out of you because you was a goofy ass foul self-consumed. You have your own self-interest in mind. You don't give a fuck about nobody, what you say, what you do, and the effects that it has on other people. That's why you're in the middle of all them lawsuits now. You'd rather go rob the average man and woman, take all they fucking money and do a Ponzi scheme than to think about how they gave you their last hoping and praying that they can take this small piece of an investment and turn it into something bigger. That's some heartless And then when it all goes down, what do you do? Now it's your partner's fault. Now it's what he did and what he kept away from you. And you ain't got nothing to do with what was going on. You ain't know nothing. And you caught off guard. It's all out in the open, bro. That's what it is, right? We're entertainers. All right, so you guys just heard what Tyrese had to say a few days ago, and he was basically going in. Now, funny enough, DJ Envy has not responded to that conversation. Now, the first time when Tyrese was crying and carrying on, DJ Envy not only responded, but also had his wife, Gia, come on the line and also address Tyrese as well. I mean, it's not getting involved I in want you to ask. in no way, shape, or form. This is, good morning, Gia, by the way, okay? Good morning. This is a conversation between a husband and a wife and why the husband uh, stopped talking to somebody and why the wife stopped talking to somebody. So the husband and wife should have a conversation. I'm sitting back watching the Casey crew live, go. Good question. So uh, <laughs> babe, just for people that don't know, uh, Tyrese helped save our relationship. When we were going through probably our lowest point and I cheated, uh, Tyrese came in and really helped us and guided us through our relationship, correct? 
Yes, he did. Absolutely. And, and then we got to a point where we stopped talking to Tyrese. I even blocked Tyrese. Uh, and I wanted to box his mouth, uh, as I said the other day. And can you explain to the people mm -hmm. why we stopped talking to Tyrese? But since then, he has not responded to, you know, Tyrese's claims. Now, what's very interesting is that is that yesterday, Team 12 Investigates, they ended up putting up a news piece concerning not only Caesar Pina, but also DJ Envy, a.k.a. Rashawn Casey. So now this situation is getting crazier. You got, you know, the white mainstream media now involved, and they're digging into this situation. So I want y'all to go ahead and watch this news clip, and I'm going to come back with the rest of my commentary of a Ponzi scheme, losing six figures each in what they thought was a legitimate real estate deal. News 12 senior investigative reporter Walt Kane has this Kane in your corner investigation. I was happy to be a part of something, especially something this big. Stanley Acosta thought it was his chance to give his family a better life. He invested $150,000 in cash in a real estate development deal. The money was supposed to be used to flip this property in Patterson. But Stanley says almost as soon as he signed the deal, something felt wrong. One of the biggest flags for me was he didn't count the cash. Um, I'm giving you 150000 in cash. You're going to want to make sure that every dollar is there. The developer was Cesar Pena, a social media influencer who advertises real estate seminars. Stanley's contract promised in return for his $150,000 investment, he'd get $45,000 in interest a 30% return in just five months. But nearly a year later, he hasn't seen any money and says Pena has stopped returning messages. From a financial standpoint, it's killed me completely. Um, I've had to take out loans to pay off credit card debts. And Stanley isn't alone. Kane in Your Corner has uncovered over a dozen lawsuits filed by people who say they invested with Pena and never got the money they were promised. I was texting him like almost every other day, like, hey, what's up with the money? So he's like, I need that money, bro. Like, Constantly texting them, texting them, texting them. He keeps delaying, delaying. Our investigation finds in some cases, Pena sold investments in properties real estate records show he never owned or sold years earlier. The lawsuits already total close to $10 million, with more being filed every week. For the last year and a half or more, it's just been taking money in from people and, and there's been no, no likelihood of people getting their money back. Some of the lawsuits also mention Rashawn Casey. He's a radio personality who goes by the name DJ Envy. Casey often appeared with Pena at real estate seminars, but his attorney insists he's a victim too. And DJ Envy also um, gave $500,000 as an investment, uh, which he has not uh, received back. Yet. Pena's attorney declined to be interviewed, but in a letter to the court, he complains about the tactics he says some investors are using. He writes, my clients need time to first protect their family from threats of death, rape, and physical harm. After that, he writes, they need to make serious and complex decisions as to how to move forward and what attorney or attorneys to move forward with. As for Stanley Acosta, he just hopes he and his family get some of their money back. If I had an opportunity to say something to Caesar and his family, it would be to just uh, do right by the victims. The SEC says before you invest money in any business deal, have an attorney review the contract. And beware of anyone who guarantees high profits, especially if they also say there's little to no risk involved. In your corner, I'm Walt Kane. All right, so you guys just saw that news clip. So what's interesting is that after that went viral, people started taking the DJ Envy's Instagram page. And when I tell you they were lighting him up, a lot of people were also saying that DJ Envy was blocking people from commenting on his page. But you guys can see the comments here. People are saying, damn, you scam people, shake my head. Scammer alert, always knew this guy was a fraud. Yo, I got 200K in cash, what can you do for me? Fraudster. Somebody else says, DJ Envy, what's going on with you and CZA? 60 Minutes got y'all on TV, but not for a good reason. Somebody else says, pay up. Another person says, NVS. <laughs> Another person says, I seen you on Channel 12 in New Jersey at DJ Envy. Other folks were saying that he was blocking and deleting comments and stuff like that. So this entire situation is crazy. Now, 
I thought he was going to address this today on The Breakfast Club. But funny enough, you know, Charlemagne didn't give him donkey of the day. He has not addressed this situation in the least. Um, even today, Charlemagne is trying to deflect for his friend. And he's basically calling out Tyrese for his antics and blaming Tyrese for the whole drama that went down between him and DJ Envy. So it's funny that Charlemagne can talk about Tyrese and, you know, the things that Tyrese is doing to DJ Envy. But Charlemagne is not talking about all of this drama that's going on with DJ Envy that's currently in the mainstream news. So I want you guys to listen to what Charlemagne the God said today. Check this out. The only thing I don't like, man, is when people come on Breakfast Club, they do an interview and the interview is received well for them. And then they just find a way to fuck up all the good PR that they got from said interview. So give me an example. Well, Tyrese... You know, we had a great hour and 20 minute conversation. We laughed, you know, we joked, we, we, you know, we, we, so many different things were explored, whether it was mental health issues, whether it was holding, you know, people accountable, whether it was talking about, you know, your friends not showing up for you. Like it was just a bunch of different things that came from the conversation. You know what I mean? And it sparked a lot of different discussions. But I don't know if it was Tyre. Just this, this is what I told Tyrese. I spoke to Tyrese Saturday. I told Tyrese, hey, man, you went, saw the comments, right? Because the whole envy saying I'll box him out went viral, right? And I think Tyrese just fed into those comments because you're, you, here's the thing, you were sitting right there. So if the comments bothered you that much. So it's perception. He thinks the perception of him. That's all it is. Yeah. That's all it is. And so oh, it's a shame. And so that's why he, you know, this, this headline, this is on Neighborhood Talk. It says Tyrese cries while reflecting on his recent Breakfast Club interview. It says DJ Envy and Charlamagne showed him no compassion. It took everything in me to stay in that seat. What does that mean? <laughs> it means that after Envy said box your mouth, it took everything in him to stay in that seat. We laughed. Why, we why was he going to box his mouth? Don't leave me after the fact and then get online and start talking about what you should have yeah. did and should have said and yada yada. Like, nah, man. Who wasn't Aaron out? Uh, out? Who wasn't Aaron? Tyrese started it. All right, honey. Y'all just heard what Charlemagne the God had to say. Did not address this situation at all. Child, when I tell you this entire situation is turning into an episode of Dominican Greed, okay? We've all heard of American Greed. Just call this Dominican greed. You know, this entire situation is crazy. It's funny how, like, once somebody's a celebrity, it's like all common sense goes out the window, and especially when it comes to accountability. Even if DJ Envy was scammed, and I don't deny that he may have been scammed by Caesar Pina, because it looks like Caesar Pina was a piece of shit. I mean, the fact that he was literally, you know, doing business transactions and all cash is insane to me. And the fact that somebody had 150K cash to hand to somebody else is also insane. Real business is not dealt with in cash. The only people who deal in cash in large sums of cash are people who are doing things that are illegal. So that should have been a red flag. A real business, especially when you're talking about real estate, all of that has to go through go through IRS, principalities, taxes. Um, you know, there has to be deeds written, the city, the state. You know, there's so much paperwork that has to be done with any type of real estate. And they have to check everything with a fine tooth comb. And so to me, when I'm seeing folks walking in with $150,000 in cash, I'm looking at this like some type of washing operation. And this is probably why a lot of people are embarrassed to, you know, go to the news and say that they were scammed because they had large amounts of cash. Where they got that cash from, that's not for me to know or speculate, but it, it's not the norm to have $150,000 in cash underneath your mattress. You know, a lot of people would think that you're dabbling in something illegal. And maybe this person saved it up and, you know, put money aside. You know, that's neither here nor there. But at the end of the day, if it was legitimate money, everything should have been ran through a bank. The fact that he didn't even have a money counter, the fact that he's doing deals in cash is insane to me. You know, so this dude knew what he was doing. 
doing. He had no shame whatsoever. But I don't want to. But I don't want to sit here and blame the victims because at the end of the day, this is on Caesar Pina. You know what I'm saying? He was the perpetuator of this crime, and I believe that DJ Envy played a hand in that because a lot of people would not know who Caesar Pina was if it was not for DJ Envy and his platform at the Breakfast Club. Let's keep that real. The name of your book is Flipping Keys. How how has the drug game like impacted your business acumen? You know what it's like? I always tell people, especially when you're from the streets, if you can survive that, you could pretty much survive anything, right? Because when we're in the streets, we're counting numbers, right? We're analyzing what's coming in, what's coming out, you know, what we're selling, right? So in, re in reality, and real estate is the same thing, is numbers. Like instead of us selling drugs on the block, now we actually own the block, right? Because we buy the houses there. And even if DJ Envy was scammed as well, like that's what he's saying, that he was scammed for 500000 I try to search for the breakfast club clip where he came out and talked to the people and say hey you guys i've been scammed please whatever you do don't trust caesar pina don't you know give him any more money he scammed me he never warned the people so to me when you don't warn the people then you're just as guilty because you knew this man was doing wrong you knew he was still operating and you kept silent it's like where's the integrity now i may not be a big joe budden fan but he did keep it real in this situation concerning dj envy and caesar pina you know, like you have to tell people these things. If you know that this guy's not doing right, you have to warn your people. Do your homework because I don't trust anybody. Because I don't trust anybody. But and that line is a fucking cop out because people are not going to seminars and paying their good money to go to a seminar to hear you say, do your own research. No, we here to hear you That's tell true. us something that true. we didn't get in the research. True. That's true. The fuck out of here. Cause I don't trust anybody. All that gunplay shit, distraction. Mm. All that car show shit, distraction. Mm. Produce that little fat fuck. Get him out of here. <laughs> Where you at? <laughs> get that little fucker to the front and say, hey, hey, Caesar. Pizza, pizza. Get up. <laughs> Let's get to it. <laughs> Let's get to it. <laughs> oh, shit. Where you at? What bag you in? Now Caesar get to hide. Look at what we talking about. No, nigga, don't hide now. Come on, you was at Best Fest. You was at every other fest. Get your ass out of here. So many folks did not know who Caesar Pina was until DJ Envy kept promoting him. And even when I go back and I watch like the um, clips of all these people you know, going to these seminars and they're there with their notebooks and their pens and they're just trying to be educated. You know, all you see is a bunch of black and brown faces and that is just heartbreaking because people don't know what they don't know, right? Like I didn't gain all this knowledge overnight. This is just years of me learning and researching and getting around the right people. So for people to spend money on these classes, on these seminars, they spent that money because they trusted DJ Envy. They trust whoever DJ Envy brought to them would be a good person, would have been vetted. And then to find out that a lot of these people have been scamming, a lot of people got nothing out of these seminars, it's really, really sad. And it's really unfortunate because, again, it's usually the minority communities who get scammed and people make excuses for it and then also blame the victim, but never hold the perpetrators like Cesar Pina accountable. So now I find it very interesting that he's trying to distance himself by saying that he too was scammed but for years he was promoting this guy you know i remember seeing these clips you know going viral all through 2020 and 2021 with this whole flipping nj thing and what up y'all it's dj envy now people always say yo there's not a lot of inventory it's hard to get houses we picked this up off of auction.com just like anybody else we outbid somebody we paid 270 for it got a house in the area going for uh this particular property Probably ARB is probably about 465. 465. Now the thing with this, we thought it was a one family, but this is actually a two family. Yeah. Needs about how much work? 15, 20,000. 15, 20 grand. So this is a home run, and we picked this up off of auction.com. No hookups, no deals. Just looking online and got the crib. So the fact that they're making it seem like it was just so easy to me just came off like red flags. And the fact that people were being promised these huge ROIs in less than six months just made no sense. That's not how ROIs work. So it's just really unfortunate, like, you know, everything that's going on. I hope that DJ Envy ends up talking about this on The Breakfast Club and using his platform to kind of explain what happened because people want to know because people trust him.
trusted him and people were taking real estate advice from him. So now to just go radio silent is just really, really disheartening. But again, I don't want to make this video too long. You know, I just hope that he comes out and he does explain himself and just explain what's going on and give at least the victim some type of solace to, you know, maybe reassure them that you're not involved. You know, I really don't know what to think of him because I thought he was like this smart real estate, you know, house flipping guru. And, you know, he has such a beautiful family. It's like, why put your family, you know what I'm saying, at risk or embarrass your family in this way, especially with people, you know, losing their money. It can get really serious. So I don't know. The whole thing is just really unfortunate. I don't know if these people are going to get their money back. You know, even if they sue them, does Caesar still have the money? You know, who knows? So anyways, y'all, let's go ahead and get the discussion popping. I'll leave the question with you guys. How do y'all feel about this entire situation? Do you feel like DJ Envy is at fault and he bears some responsibility because he did introduce the public to Caesar Pina. How do you guys feel about the people who were scammed, you know, who were giving Caesar Pina cash? And how do y'all feel about this entire situation in general? You know, it, it's really sad because it's not just the people who were scammed, you know, for the real estate money, but also people who didn't get anything out of these seminars and out of these classes. So like I always say, you have to do your research and you have to really vet people before you spend your money. You know, you got to like, if you're going to invest, invest in like things that you know have longevity and not quick flips. Because at the end of the day, a lot of this boils down to greed. Let's keep it real. You had greed from Cesar Pina, possible greed from DJ Envy, and even some of the victims, they were operating on greed. Because again, to give somebody your child's college fund or, you know, your retirement money because you think you're going to get a 50% ROI, you're operating in greed because ROIs normally are not that big and they don't give returns that fast. So you have to operate with common sense and logic and not greed. So y'all, let's go ahead and get the discussion popping. Make sure you guys hit the video with the like. Don't forget to make sure that you're still subscribed to the channel and I'll talk to y'all later. Deuces. If you want the latest news in the streets, join us sentiment for the tea. Breaking news with integrity. So sell your friends and your family. It's the lovely tea TV show. Bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the lovely tea TV show. Be sure to share, like, and subscribe.